This is the StoryWorks Roundtable, where we have conversations about craft. Because becoming a successful author begins with writing a great story. Hello and welcome to this week's StoryWorks Roundtable. Today, Catherine Robert and I are talking about revision. <laughs> and oh, so many things in life we might want to revise and just <laughs> can't. But uh, fortunately, we can revise our stories. So do you guys love revision? Hate it? What? Where does it fall in your uh, in your process? Lovers? Uh, haters? I don't know. I'm kind of in the um, quick figure it out stage. Like I've only ever revised shorter stuff and I'm working on revising this novel and I've always mm -hmm. gotten bogged down in revisions. So I'm trying to figure out like how to break it down and make it easier to absorb what all mm -hmm. I need to do mm -hmm. and not get stuck in the um, uh, little minutia or just completely rewriting or, you know, not get stuck in it. If I need to rewrite a scene, rewrite a scene, but not get stuck in that idea that, oh, now I have to rewrite the whole book. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh huh. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It was a pile of rubbish after all. See? Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay, though. As we've said before, those early oh. drafts, they are generally disposable and gladly. Well, this is what I re I love revision. It is painstaking work. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. But it's only as painstaking as turning, you know, the rough part of a sculpture into something that's beautiful. And not that I've ever done that, but you can <laughs> I can imagine, you know, stepping back uh -huh. from having, you know, chiselled off the first few pieces of marble and standing back and saying, okay, yeah, it's definitely closer to the shape I want. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to me, revision is absolutely like that. Being analytical, I love yeah. taking my draft apart, um, chopping it up into pieces, looking at the pieces that work. And then I, what I really love about it is finding new miracles in the work where you think, mm -hmm. oh, I could put this in here and that would be so cool at the end. Right. You know, so you get, it's, it's sort of like a, you know, a boy playing with his Meccano set and thinking, you know what, I could just take that bit apart and put this here instead and it would all work. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I really, I don't mind writing a first draft, but I do sometimes hate my work, you know, like everybody, you sort yeah. of, you got that love hate thing with the first words that come out. And then it's bizarre sometimes, isn't it, when you go back to them and you think, the sections that you wrote that you thought were really crappy and you're like, oh, that's no crappier than the rest of it. Really, it's all. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's a, right. it's like, oh, the way that, that your, your feelings during the writing process aren't necessarily the feelings that the story evokes. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I love about revision is that you get to play with that quite deliberately um, and sort of adjust yeah. the moving parts, you know, so that what started out as a rough sketch now becomes an artful painting. Mm -hmm. Um and I have that in my head, that metaphor in my head when I approach revision. I think I'm, I'm going to turn this into something that I would really love to read myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the that's how we start. You know, the, when you first draft, you want you're writing a book that you would love to read, and then as the words come out, you think, "Oh God, who would want to read this? Is rubbish. <laughs> it's terrible." Uh, who would use? He said, she said so many times. Why is that adverb there? You know, and you've got to switch that off while you're doing the first draft. But then when you come back to revision, it's that part that comes alive again. And you've got to distance yourself from thinking, well, I wrote this rubbish to mm -hmm. I'm going to make this great. And that's what I love about it. Yeah. Yeah, me too. It's definitely a process of refinement. And we were talking in the, um, goal episode about the big rocks and then the small rocks and then the sand. And I think it's kind of the same with the writing process. When you write that first draft, you're just getting the big rocks down, you know, I think and so. then as you refine, you're getting more detailed, more polished, more specific, more nuanced, you know, going for the from the gross to the subtle. So at the early draft stage, you're looking at the gross, the big rocks, and it's like, character and plot, just what are these events? Who's doing what? Okay, I'm trying to find this character's voice, let's just get this stuff on the page. And then in your middle drafts, 
oh, now I know my characters, I'm smoothing out the rough edges, they're looking like real human beings now, and I'm seeing how these plot events weave together and where the subplots fit in, and I'm finding the rhythm of this piece and the pacing and where I should slow down and do some mood or character work and where I need to really pick up the pace and the dramatic tension and move it forward. And then you get to the polishing drafts, and that's the sand, the subtle stuff where you're really making it sing at, you know, the sentence level and pulling forward the art. Yes. So, yeah, so so revising is a layered process, isn't mm-hmm. it? You know, it's not – I think that's where a lot of people will think of it as one big rock. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and, 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 yes, okay, it might be in terms of what you've got to leap over to get to a, a publishable product. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a series of, of different approaches. You know, and, and when you're talking about big rocks, I deliberately go through my first draft looking for where the big rocks uh, – big right. rock problems are. That's mm-hmm. the very first thing I do. I don't care about the fact that it's got 90 gazillion adverbs um, <laughs> or or that I've got, you know, three wooden characters. What I want to know is why is that character that I introduced in the first act um, disappeared completely from the rest of the book? Right. <laughs> um, I better fix that uh, or at least provide a good reason why, you know. Um, mm-hmm. w- or why is it that there's a giant plot hole that I never saw when I was writing it? Mm-hmm. So I'm looking for those big things that I want to go back and fix first. Yes. Um, I do. I do think it's helpful. I I do a scene by scene deconstruction. I usually write scene by scene mm-hmm. anyway, so that's relatively easy. But sometimes when you write scene by scene, you know, you write a scene and it ends up being five. So in Scrivener, I'll often <laughs> split those apart, uh-huh. um, and then so I have an idea of what the, you know, the inciting incident of the scene might be and what the ending of that particular scene might be. So again, it's quite mechanical and. Uh, in my first mm-hmm. pass through, um, but then I'll let that sit usually for a bit, you know, a day or so, or whatever, while I think about, well, what are the big problems with this draft um, and how would I solve those? Right. Because uh, mm-hmm. start with the sand. If you start with, oh, God, I wrote this crappy draft, I've got 100,000 words, now what? Um, <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Because you might go back, oh, well, I'll just start writing it again. Mm-hmm. And so many writers have done that. And I think that's where an understanding of editing um, because I think every writer should be able to do their first self-edit. I just don't think mm-hmm. any writer should first draft off to an editor because it's right. too hard, um, yeah. you know, because they're still too close to the story. So I think teaching yourself to do at least one one first edit, one revision, mm-hmm. um, I would recommend many more, but, you know, it, it's, and it brings you closer to, to story craft and what makes a compelling story and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Robert, why are you so opposed to adverbs? <laughs> <laughs> she says demandingly. Yes. In my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think No, look, where... I, I I went through a short story recently and I took out half the adverbs and I left half in which left about 30 um that were outside dialogue. <laughs> Oh, and well, and good. it was definitely better. Good, for it. good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. You were <laughs> you were saying something, Catherine. I think that's where I'm getting stuck right now. It's like I. So here's a different, completely different mindset than you, Robert. I wrote my first draft. I let it sit. Yep. I, then I picked it back up about a month later and I reread it, start to finish, just kind of taking general notes, just things that are jumping out on me. And here's. Here's me as a writer, uh, re- reveal time. I really like my book. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I think it's really good. Like, I'm enjoying it. It's, you know, it's fun. Like, there are things that I need to fix, clearly. But it's like, mm-hmm. I really like it. So then it's hard to get started <laughs> because you're like, you it's almost. perfect. It's not that it's perfect. <laughs> okay. But it's like, it's fun already. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, great. Well, that's and fantastic. so then going back in and feeling like I have to do the work to make it you know it's just like it's a hard thing to settle back into yes um so i did a lot of like journaling of like things that i knew i needed to fix characterization wise or plot wise that you know for my first major um revision and then i went back and i kind of out re back outlined act one what i had and then i kind of 
re-outlined what I want it to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And so now I'm stuck in the trenches of, well, I don't want to start because it's already done. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, restarting yeah. the same project. It's it's a yeah. mental break. Block Too resistant for me. to uh, yeah to the revision that you know needs to happen though because right. you did the work exactly. of outlining of re outlining it. Oh yeah, I know what yeah. needs to happen. It's an interesting mental block or place well, to be in where I look at it and I look at the scene that I'm yeah. in and I'm like. So what? Okay. So what? So what do you think will happen if you do it? It just feels like a lot. Yeah. Would you that's publish right. it as it is? No. And okay. that's the thing. <laughs> so there you go. Do the so work. But it's, but it's interesting. It's like, like where, how do you guys approach it in terms of like where, what are motivation? you doing? Not even motivation, but like what process are you using to start that revision? Detachment. Like what are you doing? You roll up your sleeves Detachment. and you get writing. <laughs> you, I mean, there's just no easy right. way to do it. It's like it's not done. It's not what I want it to be. It's not the art, you know, the finished product. So I can shelve it indefinitely, or I can see it through. And sometimes that feels like drudgery. And sometimes it doesn't. But as with the first drafting process, um, and we have an episode about first drafts, we'll link to in the show notes, you just have to get going. And once right. you get going, you get that momentum building and it becomes fun again to see the changes taking shape. You know, it's exciting to see the improvements of something you already like becoming that thing so that you, goes from good to great, you know. Right. So do you rewrite in scene order or, or rewrite or revise in scene order or do you yes. do it out of order or like do you go back and re-outline and do all that sort of stuff that I have already done? to get myself started? Like, how do you approach the process? I definitely do it in order because if I change something in act one, it could affect act two or act three, you know? Mm -hmm. So I want that domino effect. Um, I don't want to screw myself up by doing something out of order, you know? And I will absolutely re-storyboard my book in the middle of revisions if I hit a point where I'm confused about it. You yeah. know, it's like, I know I need yeah. to get from here to there, but is what I have, it's not working. What do I need it to do? I need some fresh ideas. I need to see this differently. Reading the text that is on the page over and over isn't going to get me there. So mm -hmm. I need to pull back from the text, go back into that storyboarding process where I'm thinking with a sketch and that sketch is much more malleable than the you know 100,000 words or whatever I've got right in my first draft that feels like something set you know like the block of stone whereas the clay oh I'll just pinch it here and poke it there and reshape mm -hmm. it <laughs> so yeah I'm not sure I re-outline but I definitely re-list the scenes mm -hmm. like I said um, I might then, uh, yeah, okay, the, what I'll do with then is I'll then look at them in from a, a, a three-act structure mm -hmm. and just see if that compares well to what I thought I had the story as in my head. Mm -hmm. um, I will rewrite scenes out of order, um, but I am usually because I've found a big problem somewhere, so I think oh, I'm going to fix that before I do any minor editing anywhere else because mm -hmm. then I'll know what I need to do before and after. Um, because sometimes creative things will come to me when I'm drafting, if you like, the, the rewrite. Mm -hmm. um, in Scrivener, I I make collections a lot. Uh, I find collections to be the most powerful feature in editing of, of Scrivener. So what I'll do is I'll do a search on a particular character's name or a search on a label if I've labeled a scene a certain way. So I might label all the scenes that have got the biggest problems with to fix and then I'll create a collection that searches for any scene that's got a label of to fix and puts in a collection. And then all we do is click on that collection and it only list those scenes down mm. the left hand side then. Oh, and nice. then I'll and then I'll read all of those in one scrivenings. Mm. Um it, because that's helpful as well to get a flow for all of your really bad scenes together and you can see, okay, you think you actually find some interesting solutions that way as well that you may not have found if you'd been reading trying to read the whole book or just mm -hmm. looking at scene over, scene overviews mm. Um, mm, nice 
And then if I have a particular character, if it's a point of view character, which I haven't had recently, but in previous books I have, they'll separate those out so I can read their um, point of view scenes all the way through just mm -hmm. in one, one stream. Right. So if, I do find Scrivener shortens the time frame for that because you can easily pre-select. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And that help that does help write out write things yeah. out of order a bit because you've you've still got an order if you yes. like of of that particular character. Yeah, and I've also done it for a particular thing. So yeah, I've had a place. So if I've had a place where people are at, and then I've used that as a collection in Scrivener, so I can see where scenes featured that place. Mm -hmm. um, it can get complicated because obviously if it's a place that people talk about every day, um, you yeah. know, like Hogwarts <laughs> or something like that, then you're just going to get every scene. That's um, everything. <laughs> yeah. But so you, you can, you know, uh, sometimes I will put in Scrivener in the notes section for a, for a particular mm -hmm. file, you can search notes for keywords. So rather than actually make a specific keyword, I might put um, uh, uh, Danielli's personality or something like that and use that uh, to search because mm -hmm. I've got this guy's just not got enough personality. So every time I come across a scene where he feels a bit wooden, I might put that in notes mm -hmm. so that I can go back and then see all those scenes where De Danielli's personality isn't vivid enough. Um, mm -hmm. And that way when I do my revision pass, the layer has a specific intent so I'm not just trying to fix everything at once. And I think right. that's where I found it daunting is, you know, I know some people say do a pass on dialogue tags and then do another pass on sentence structure, do another pass on story structure. That's kind of what I'm doing, but I'm doing it in themes maybe. Mm -hmm. And I, I like, mm -hmm. makes me feel good about the way I'm, I don't know, maybe it's like a, again, to like a sculptor saying, okay, mm -hmm. today what I'm doing is I'm working on, on the head and the expression. You know, I'm not going to do a bit of the eyes and a bit of the hand and a bit of the foot. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Yeah. I do a much more holistic, have a more holistic take on it, I think, where I'm doing, you know, a whole scene or a whole chapter, but I'm looking for those things you were talking about, Robert. So I say, is there a weakness in this scene in dialogue or is there a weakness in, you know, right. the theme's not coming forward or is there yeah. whatever. So I'm kind of doing what you're doing, but it's fewer passes you know it's like instead of doing the whole book yep. per yep. issue i'm doing a chapter with all the issues kind of you know so it's like the same process but a shift in in focus so mm -hmm. you know <laughs> i feel like in recent episodes we keep coming back to this point of kind of know what kind of writer you are so yeah, here's yeah. another example yeah. of that where you can say oh which process is going to work better for me, right. you know. Right. Um, well, and yeah, I think revision that, is pretty personal. Well, I think yeah. everybody has their own process. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think what we're saying is don't leave any part of that out. No, absolutely. So, so you know, we, we're, we're all probably doing everything that needs to be done to, mm -hmm. to shape that final beautiful mm -hmm. product, so mm -hmm. that, you know, to get the most creative part. And like they say, you know, the, there are no perfect books, only abandoned ones. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, at, at some point you're just going to have to say, well, you know, it is what it is. And mm -hmm. and uh, and I can understand Catherine's sort of reticence with something that's, you know, is already appealing. Well, if I go in, am I going to break this beautiful right. thing that I created um, right. because, I've, oh, no, because I've been so ana analytical about it? Chip well, the nose off yeah. the face. Right. Yeah. Well, and here's like where I am. So like I've... I'm in the middle of revising a chapter and I'll revise, I'll kind of have to rewrite because my I'm fixing some really large things in the beginning, right, yeah. especially mm -hmm. it's like yeah. nothing is exactly what you wanted it to be. Um, and so I'll rewrite a scene and then I'll go back and kind of read through it just to get myself ready for the next scene. And I find more specific things wrong with it the second time through, but I'm trying mm -hmm. to say, okay, but those are specific things that I know I can just go back and fix. Yep. later they're not plot problems Polish. they're not character problems right so i just like leave a comment and leave it yeah. but yes. then so i feel like i'm fine i'm making more problems even though i'm solving the larger problems like when you look at your document you're like oh i'm looking now i got 17 comments to fix um rather right. than you know the two, two. major things that i went in to fix you know yeah I, but that's okay that, you know because right. it's finishing work with the uh, 
if you use something like Word or Pages mm -hmm. and you use a commenting system, then what happens is your document is already visually a freaking mess yeah. um, mm -hmm. with things that, as you say, might be small. Um, and so I do think that, which is probably why most of us would print our stuff out yes. to, to, to read, to mm -hmm. make you know, mm -hmm. notes for large issues. But then if you're then going back through, Catherine, and then starting to list down in comments smaller issues you want to go back and fix that must be unbelievably distracting. It'd be like coming to the Venus de Milo and, and seeing all these post-it notes stuck all over. You know, <laughs> must get this bit smoother, you know. Don't like the fingers here. You know, it's it's hard for you to then kind of zero in on what it is you're actually trying to work on. Mm, so, right. so maybe, you know, take a step back from your process and, and see if the mechanics are also getting yeah. in the way. Right. Yeah. Well, one thing I find really useful with that problem, both before Scrivener when I was writing in Word and now with Scrivener is I create new files for each draft. And in Scrivener, the nice thing is it's all one document, but I've got that folder that's the first draft and then a new folder that's the second draft. And so I clear up that visual clutter each time I work through it. And I'm just seeing what I'm actually working on in that moment. And mm -hmm. one thing I do is I make my storyboard longhand, put it into Scrivener on their note cards. And then as I write the book, that's in a separate folder. And for each chapter I write, I make a new note card for the storyboard, a new synopsis, because I, I'm i not 100% true to the original storyboard. Yeah. You get new ideas as yeah. you go, things shift yeah. and change. So then I've got those two storyboards as a reference point, say... Did I veer off from anything really great in the original storyboard that I really want to incorporate? What's the new direction here? And so by creating new, you know, folders or new documents for each draft, you clear the clutter, you maintain the reference points, nothing gets like super confusing because you've got just that, that kind of clean document mm -hmm. each time you go through it, you know? Yeah. It's a messy process, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my God. And it's so it messy. Really is, it's easy to get sucked into the detail as well because part of it is that as we're doing it, we're, we're of course, reading. Mm -hmm. And and reading is a, is a stimulating experience. Uh, and it might stimulate the fact that, you're, oh, I hate that sentence there. I better make a note to fix that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to train yourself out of that or find a way to make a note that isn't intrusive mm -hmm. um, and and stick to the, the knitting of what you're doing at that particular moment. Right. Um, and, and, and so I think that is it is a discipline. I, I do think re revising is a major discipline mm -hmm. and it's a, a very different discipline to the creative discipline of, of spitting your story out in the first place. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. What about time-wise? Do you guys spend, like, how much time does your vision draft take versus yeah. your first yeah. draft? Uh. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't actually calculated how much time. I mean, it's always just it takes as long as it takes. And Well, does it feel like it takes longer, though, than your first draft, or does your first draft feel like it takes longer? And you can include or not include pre-writing in that. I don't really care. Mm. <laughs> God, I don't even know. I mean, they're both fun and they're both just part of the process. So if I've got momentum, if I can hit a flow state, regardless of which one I'm doing, then I enjoy it. So it doesn't, mm -hmm. I'm not like tracking time. Do you track your time, Robert? Um, not down to the minute, but I, I will say it's definitely, I would say it's probably longer than first draft. I probably could shorten it, mm -hmm. um, but it's quite, I find it tiring. Um, mm -hmm. because sometimes you're down in the minutiae, you know, you're, yeah. you, you, you've, 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 you've built the house, but then now you're going through it and say, well, that skirting board's not right. This ceiling mm -hmm. rose needs to change. Mm -hmm. I don't like the color of that wall and all these things, you know, take time to go in and adjust and then you adjust it. And right. like you say, Alita, it then has a knock on effect for somewhere else that mm -hmm. I now have to note and go back and fix. And then I'm, 
I'm a checker, so I do like to go back and check things, and uh, which, again, is why I like Scrivener, because I yeah. can then go back and check, say, okay, uh, all of these key scenes with Indy, do they now make sense? Mm-hmm. And uh, there might be eight key scenes, so I'm now going to read them all in a row, and I read it, and I thought, oh, I need to fix this, need to fix mm-hmm. that, need to fix this, so I've got to go back again. Yes. Um, <laughs> and and I'm, I'm not a perfectionist in the sense that I will – keep going until i mean i I really want it to be in a state where i think it's it lives um and i'm mm-hmm. okay with it. so it's not like i'm going to go back there right i mean just one more pass on all those dialogue tags you know I, i'm probably not right. going to do that um or oh, adverbs maybe but um <laughs> <laughs> those darn adverbs <laughs> cut 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 <laughs> um <laughs> oh dear we should do an episode of all those writing rules you should just ignore yeah um... uh and um <laughs> But yeah, it's it, I, it is finicky work, and so I do think I probably give it more time than the first draft, and right. that's something I'd like to get better at. I, mm-hmm. I think I could be. If, um, I'm already methodical, but I think if I was more methodical, um, because my aim in 2018 is is well from now onwards, not just 2018, is to be more productive with mm-hmm. uh, a publishing schedule. Yeah, um, you know, and we do. There are indie, indie authors in the community who are who are doing a book a month, and my qu- question is always, you know, how do they make the editing process work? Um, now, it, obviously, if you've got a pipeline, so once you build up a few drafts, then in the morning you might be working on drafting, and in the afternoon you're working on editing, uh, revising. Mm-hmm. That I find difficult, right? Because it's it's yeah, mentally got, taxing. It's mentally taxing, yeah. So yeah. drafting in itself is mentally taxing in yeah. one way, in the creative way, and then you've got to go back maybe to a different draft of a different mm-hmm. book that you, you is in a different part of the publishing schedule, and now you've got to wrap your head around, oh, what was I doing with this one again? Oh, that's right. Yes. The gun didn't appear at the right time in the story. I've got to fix that. You know? mm-hmm. and so is, you know, But that's the writing life, isn't it? Sure is. And if you're traditionally, <laughs> you'd be on a contract um, and you'd yes. have no choice. You know, the editor would be feeding things back to you and saying, we need these back by the 28th of the month following. Um, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. Right. Unless you have an arts patron who, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. This we all, out. Um, pays all your bills all and sends you an on retreats. Patron. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> We're putting the word out there. Hello. Any arts patrons? <laughs> do call. <laughs> Uh, send us a note at info at storyworkspodcast.com. That's right. Yes. All right. So let's wrap this up here. Revision. It's challenging. It's mentally taxing. It's necessary. You cannot escape it. <laughs> Do it uh, big rocks to small. Just roll up your sleeves and dive in. Use your tools. Scrivener has a lot of fantastic features. Clear the clutter between each draft and anything I missed, any other tips we want to it's add fun. to the wrap up. It's fun. You're making it some fun. Good. Yeah. It's good from good to great. Yes, you're making art. All right. Thank you so much for listening to this week's StoryWorks Roundtable. Find show notes and more at storyworkspodcast.com. Thank you for listening to the StoryWorks Roundtable. Find all our shows, show notes, and videos at storyworkspodcast.com. <laughs>